What is up YouTube? Stocks by the numbers. Let's get right into it. Wanted to talk about this company for a while. Missed my chance. Now Berkshire Hathaway is grabbing more shares. Name of the company, Occidental Petroleum Corporation, ticker symbol OXY, New York Stock Exchange. Stock closed $62.15, up $1.30 or 2.14% here on the day. This is an oil and gas company. So this company obviously has been doing rather well for the last couple of years. Of course, we have our bounce. Uh, this is pandemic. And then right before elections, you can see the stock was down sub $9. And then, of course, under new administration that loves oil, the price of crude skyrocketed from 30 to north of uh, what, $110, $120, wherever the hell it went. And before you know it, you have a stock that was sub $9, is now $75 over, what, like a 16-month period. So, you know, it, it definitely exploded, and the price of oil climbing seriously helped this company rebound to, to pre-pandemic levels. But also at the same time, as you can see, it was maintaining these levels for quite some time, for several years. And kind of bouncing around, I don't want to say remaining flat, because it does have its ups and downs throughout the months. So, you know, there was money to be made and potentially lost with a company like Oxy. However, throughout this time frame, they also paid a much, much healthier dividend. We'll get into that in a second. But, you know, seeing it rebound back up to where it was, not really a big deal. However, you can see, you know, dropping into the 50s and the 40s, even into the 30s here, before the shit hit the fan for us, so to speak. Right. So, you know, the company was selling off and in a pullback. And if you look at the numbers, uh, they were negative. Yeah, here, I mean, you know, obviously 2020, they, they did go negative and revenue did pull back. However, you know, overall, it looked like the company was going to have a bad year. And even coming off of 2019, you can see a big jump in revenue up to 19.2 billion coming off of 15 and a half. But, you know, profits went south. And of course, the company net income negative for the year, so that never looks good on paper. And then, you know, the pandemic hit, so the company got absolutely decimated. But bringing it back up again to pre-pandemic levels, not really, you know, what blows my mind. What blows my mind is how fast it happened, right? That's that's why I said like a little over a year's time frame, and uh, you could have made, you know, 650, 700% here, uh, you know, which obviously is kind of ridiculous for a stock to move that much that quick. But I understand you had to get a get it back up to that levels, right? So it's kind of justified, right? But again, not completely bashing the company because I know I give a lot of companies hard times here. But if we come down here, we can see 52 week range, 51 and a half, 52 week high, 77.13. So we're basically dead middle of the range, which is usually a decent time to buy. Uh, market cap, 56 billion, we'll call it. Companies yielding 1.18% for you to own shares. And we have a PE of under five, which obviously on paper looks extremely attractive companies earning over $13 a share. Very nice. So market cap, 56 billion. We come down here last year, the company revenue absolutely spiked up here under this administration and 36 and a quarter billion in revenue last year. Companies trading at 56 billion with a five PE, they pay a dividend. Yeah, I can understand why a company like Berkshire Hathaway jumped in. You know, are you going to see a massive run? Probably not. But in my opinion, you know, probably a safe place. You're going to make a quick, you know, 15, 20% probably conservatively. And uh, in my eyes, if I, if I was Warren Buffett, I would tell him to hold this for no longer than 12 to 16 months. Because what you want to do is you want to potentially begin to piece out, uh, I'd say about halfway through next year. Because it's an election year, right? You're going to have a clearer picture of who the front runner is, who the, the American people really want who may have the potential to win this thing. And chances are, if it's a Republican or even an independent, they will most likely do the opposite of what this current administration is doing. And the price of oil went from 30, again, to over $100 under Biden. So the opposite is probably going to happen. So the price of oil will come down, gas will become cheaper, and uh, companies like this will, you know, not, you know, not completely sell off, but, you know, they're going to go back to where they were and a company like this, you know, 15, 17, 19 billion. So that's why right now they're 30 plus billion, let's say for, you know, this year, next year, and then going into 2025, 2026, you know, they may pull back to, you know, 19 billion again, or, you know, 21 and a half billion, you know, a little inflation or whatever. So, but also the profit margins are going to pull back as well. This right here in 2018 was a pretty healthy year for Oxy, bringing in north of 15 and a half billion, 
profit margin 26.4%. But then again, as I mentioned, 2019 revenue goes up, profit margins turn negative. 2020, the company still does decent revenue, but begins bleeding like crazy. And then immediately coming out of the new administration, the company is wildly profitable. Revenues, you know, hit highs. And, um, you know, look at the way they were kind of inconsistently bouncing around, fighting to get to north of $20 billion. And then they just completely break through by $6 billion and post $26 billion, 9% profit margin, and then $36.25 billion posting 36.5% profit margin off of that. I mean, you know, look at where they closed 2020, even 2019, and then now look at 2022. You know, so the company was bleeding with inconsistent revenue, and now, boom, basically doubled its revenue from where it was just a few years ago, and now is wildly profitable and has cash on hand. So, not knocking the company, but basically the gist of what I'm saying is companies like this are tied to politics. So that's why I'm saying if you do want to buy the company, it does look attractive. They, you know, they do appear to be growing on paper. And again, we have a, you know, a very low PE. They pay us a dividend. So I totally understand the attraction to this company. However, again, I'd hold it for about 12, 15, 16 months, maybe max. Because in my opinion, something's going to happen. And chances are we are not going to be under a Biden and Democratic administration again. And, you know, certain things like the price of oil is going to drastically come down to where it was pre-Biden. But if we look at the financials, right, if we look here, I've been looking at the forecast, as you guys know, for the last couple of stocks I've been looking at. And this is very interesting, right, because you have a massive breakout year here in 2022. And they did miss EPS estimates here coming in slightly shy, but, you know, not knocking the company. What I'm showing you here is the fact that they're basically looking for this company to be less and less profitable Moving forward, going from six dollars and eighteen cents for this year, twenty twenty three, down to six oh four, five eighteen, three eighty two in twenty twenty six. So you know, they're anticipating some serious haircuts for this company. Even the revenue, as you can see, coming in shy for the year, missing by what is that, like four hundred million. But moving forward here, twenty twenty three, revenue dropping from thirty seven billion, we'll call it, down to thirty one and a quarter billion, thirty point six, thirty. 29 right so analysts are basically estimating that this is the peak this is the peak for this company that's why right now looking at something like this i don't even know how confident i'd be holding it for the next 12 15 18 months but also at the same time i understand if you want to ride the wave and you think you know oil is going to go higher again and a company like this the stock's going to go higher so you're going to make money i understand i understand it but moving forward I mean, I know we may want to diversify our portfolios, so you may want to get an energy company or an oil company in there, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know if it would be more than like a 12, 15, 18-month hold. I really, really don't because, uh, well, I wanted to show you the dividends too. Look at this. Right, so I showed you. Oh, it was like relatively flat, but it you know was bouncing around under Trump, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Look at the dividend, paying three dollars a share, up to three fourteen. Increase, look, increased from sixteen to seventeen, from three hundred two to three hundred six. Increased again in eighteen. Increased again in nineteen. Then we go into twenty twenty. Look, all of a sudden they can't pay out any money, and they're only back up to fifty cents a share, roughly. So all of a sudden. So that's what? One sixth, less than one sixth of what they were paying out. So they're only paying out like 15% of what they were for several years consistently, right? So they were known as a staple company that, you know, was bouncing around with the price of oil, but they paid you, you know, a nice healthy, look at this, you know, four, five percent, seven and a half percent yielding dividend. And now look, you're down to virtually nothing. Right now, what, 1.1% or whatever it is. So that's also why the company has record profits is because they're holding on to this money. They're not giving it back to their shareholders like they would, uh, like they were, excuse me, for several years before all of this happened. You know, so now we're, we're coming out of this shit show and, you know, you have companies withholding profits and basically not paying out to shareholders. So that's why... 
I understand that the value of the stock here at 62.15 may appreciate and will go probably to you know 82, 85 dollars a share. And Berkshire Hathaway and shareholders are going to make you know an easy 20, 25, potentially 30 percent in the next year, year and a half. Definitely understandable, especially with them withholding profits. But again, also at the same time, this is not. Oh, I'm going to buy it. And, you know, I'm just keep adding to it for the next five, 10 years. It's not that situation because, again, this company, unfortunately, is pretty tied to politics. And even though they're looking well on paper now, you know, let, let's bring oil back down to uh, $38 a barrel, you know, and, and then we'll see how healthy this company is. Or if they go back to increasing their dividends, doing the right thing by shareholders like they were, like they were for so many years. If they immediately jump back up to two fifty three dollars a share like they were paying, would they be anywhere near this attractive on paper? And the answer, of course, is probably not. So not bashing the company, but we do have room for growth. I could see, you know, 40, 50 percent rise from here. Absolutely. I could see it. However, again, you know, the more they will increase their dividend, the lower the profits will be. Um, and of course, the slower it will take for them to rise to that level. But uh, I, I guess I can say I understand why they bought shares. We're switching over here to stock charts. And as you can see, MACD crossed uh, the company posted earnings. Oh, yeah, earnings. If I go back for a month, I just want to show you. You know, yeah, again, the EPS seriously slotting, coming in 11% under estimates. Under estimates and uh, again, missing by over $150 million here on the revenue side. So, you know, the, the, the actual business does seem to be seriously bouncing around along with the politics. But overall, you know, I do see the appreciation. I do see the fundamental attraction to this company. So I definitely understand why a guy like Warren Buffett uh, felt confident to step in with his and, you know, shareholder money and take a increased position in Oxy. Uh, as you can see, we're looking here at the daily, uh, you know, spiked up. Is this okay? Just wanted to reload it. Make sure I didn't miss anything. So spiked up, pulled back, 62.15 on the close. As you can see, Brownson broke off the mid Bollinger Band and then closed above it and potentially was above the moving average as well here. So in my opinion, with the strong MACD here that just recently crossed and, of course, the Berkshire News, the company most likely will break through the moving averages and could probably easily at least get back to this 200-day moving average in the short term of around 65 and probably top out and just slowly climb up to 66, 67, maybe over the next week or two. If we switch over here to the weekly, you can see going all the way back to, what is this, February... So about 12, 13 months ago, you can see that the company has uh, bounced off the support of the 200-day moving average and has since been well above it and has been above the 50-day moving average really for almost two years going back. This is what I'm saying. See how stable and rock solid a company like this is under an administration like this. This is, this is what I'm saying. That's why I'm not knocking the company, but unfortunately, it is in a sector that is tied to politics. The MACD has really just slowly been bleeding and selling off for about, I don't know, 15, 16 months. But see the little resistance there off the 50-day moving average, 64.19? That's why I'm saying, in my opinion, off this new news, it's bouncing off the bottom Bollinger Band. It will most likely begin to slowly climb up as everyone reading about Berkshire Hathaway will probably agree, of course, whether they know what they're talking about or not. And they will feel that they're buying a phenomenal company for discount and they'll get in at 62, 63, 66, and they'll ride it up to 82, 85, 88. So again, we'll most likely fight a little bit, but we'll break through to the 50, uh, 65, 66 mark here, mid Bollinger Band 65, 64, and it will most likely slowly start to climb into the 70s. So there is money to be made here. That is really the bottom line. But again, you're on a strict time frame because unfortunately, it is tied to politics. But I'm going to leave it there. So once again, this is Stocks by the Numbers. I want to thank you guys for stopping by. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop it down in the comments section. Just like everyone on YouTube says, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up, please. If you like the video, subscribe to the channel. Really appreciate it. But moving forward, like I always say, I understand that markets are rocky, they're volatile, and they're uncertain. So I wish everyone success. I hope everyone makes a couple of dollars. I want to thank you for taking a few minutes to stop by here. 
You guys have a good day.